First tonight, the federal government's higher education overhaul appears set for defeat. PUP Senate leader Glenn Lazarus says his party will vote against the government's deregulation plan for universities, saying it won't engage in horse trading. Senator Lazarus has also accused Education Minister Christopher Pine of inundating him with text messages asking him to support government proposals. Lazarus has released a statement saying Mr Pine is embarrassing himself. The Education Minister stayed on message during question time. We want to give students the opportunity to get the chance to have 75 per cent on average higher incomes over a lifetime by getting to university. We want our universities to be world class. So I call on the Senate, I call on the crossbench to pass our reforms and give our universities the best chance to be internationally competitive. It's simple. If this government wanted to reboot, recast, press the delete button, try and convince people that they never made the promises before the election had broken them, there are six little things they could do. No GP tax. Yeah. No $100,000 university degrees. Yeah. People want to make sure that people can go to university, equitable access to university. Ac equitable and affordable access to university is what we need to be ensuring in this country. I'm, I'm, no, I'm not a great fan of it, but you know, I've put forward things that I think uh, five points um, where I think, you know, that are, well, you know, really are not negotiable. Um, and, you know, and I'm very keen to hear what other alternatives people have um, to what's being proposed by the government. You know, there are problems. Marius Benson, not looking good for Christopher Pine at this point. Where can we go to from here? I don't know where the government can go to. I think they can put it in the same basket they've got the GP co-payment in, which is uh, maybe try again next year, maybe forget about it entirely. They've got all the polit political pain of driving these policies and the, the, the prospect of getting them through the Senate really seemed distant at best because the numbers, the arithmetic to feature, you've got uh, 33 of coalition senators, you need 39, you need six out of eight cross benches, you only need three cross benches to be against you. There was always the numbers there against the, the government. And I think I feel a bit sorry for Christopher Pine, really. I mean, if it, they, they get accused of not negotiating, and then when they negotiate, they get accused of inundating us with text. So uh, uh, you can't win. And it just didn't seem like they were ever going to have enough to get uh, the six extra votes they needed. Yeah, what did you make? What did you make of the pile on Christopher Pine with this Jane Carrow? I mean, people were talking about him, and you know, he's he's sending me too many text messages. He won't leave us alone. Jackie Lambie said he should go and get himself a box of Kleenex. It's all over. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm not sure that sending masses of text messages really qualifies as negotiating. Um, I'm not quite sure that works and particularly when the guy's in hospital with kidney stones it is a little insensitive. Um, I've never had kidney stones but I've heard they're most unpleasant um, and I can imagine getting a constant text from Christopher Pine with kidney stones is just a bridge too far for anybody. Uh, the problem with this is this was not something they brought to the election this was something they launched on as after the election. And the problem with that is that then gives anyone who wants to oppose it a kind of moral high ground. Mm -hmm. Had they brought these reforms to their election campaign and been elected, it would be much easier for them to get it through. The problem is the public feels hoodwinked. They're not keen on these reforms. I'm not keen on these reforms. And that gives people like Jackie Lambie, uh, Senator Madigan, Lion Home and PUP, who said, right. all of them, the power. And they can play to the gallery, which is the public. That's what the government's done. Sabine Wolf, what do you think in terms of the debate? The government did make some small concessions in terms of the rates of the fees and scholarships for disadvantaged students. Today, the Vice-Chancellor of Canberra University has come out saying, I I'm the first Vice-Chancellor to say this, but this is poorly designed and it's unfair. Do you think these kinds of words will have an impact on the debate going forward? Can we see more concessions or do you think we're just done? Um, I think we're done and I think they really need to be done. Uh, I think it's, it's going to be terrible for them if they, um, if they try to push into the Christmas break not having uh, resolved this issue and so I think they either need to find a way to get uh, the crossbenchers to support it or, or they need to drop it completely. Um, I don't think that they can afford to have this stagnate over the Christmas break and then have it taking up you know, what's supposed to be a fresh start when they come back next year. Um, you know. At the end of last year, 
there was no sort of clear agenda heading forward and so it, all these little issues sort of popped up over the Christmas break and, and then there was really, you know, it, it wasn't the best start for them when they, they sort of came in fresh in 2014. Um, you know, I think what we're seeing now is actually a result of that, um, just the fact that there was no clear agenda heading forward. Um, you know, the debate was allowed to be captured by all these other issues. Um, you know, no one had sort of done the work over the Christmas period to make sure that all the groundwork had been laid. So I think that they need to ditch it and ditch it now. <laughs>